Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are reacting to Film Theory, Finding Nemo's Untold Story, Pixar Finding Nemo by the Film Theorist. So, Finding Nemo, is this the, f the first Finding Nemo theory on the Film Theory channel? I don't know, but if it is, that would be very surprising because Finding Nemo has been out for almost 16 years so i don't know if this is the first finding nemo uh film theory i know that there is a finding dory film theory out there but i don't know if this is the first finding nemo film theory so in three two one let's react so you see doc um sure they may have found me in the end but did i ever really find Myself? <clears throat> Listen, Nemo, I'm really disappointed in you. Oh no! Uh, why? Because that joke was cod awful. A real pile of carp. I thought you were supposed to be a clownfish. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, all right, good session today. See you. He is a clownfish. He is a clownfish. How 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 many voice actors do they have on the film theory or game theory channel? Because there's been a lot of voice acting out there. Next week, buddy. Thanks for ending it on a good joke. But I wasn't joking. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, home to the most sophisticated fan theories on the Internet. With Pixar back in the news for its newest film, a tale of two guys living in a gritty urban world filled with magic called Bright. Fairy lives don't matter today. Wait, Will Smith is in this? I had no idea! He is everywhere these days, isn't he? Oh, wait, no, yeah. no. Sorry, got it confused with the other movie about two guys living in a gritty urban world filled with... Oh, it's... Dreams? Is that the name of it? Is it Dreams? I already forgot. I I watched the trailer of this like a while ago. It hasn't, it hasn't been made yet because I'm not gonna watch it because it has. I'm pretty sure it's out in theaters and I'm pretty sure it's out in theaters. All right, I'm not gonna watch it because quarantine. Magic. This one is called Onward, which, if I'm being honest, isn't. Oh yeah, Onward. Well, that's a terrific time to to go to the cinemas, not, um, to go to the theaters, because, you know, um, we're going to stay quarantined, all right? We're not going to watch an onward movie, all right, Pixar? Equally non-interesting, non-descriptive title as Bright, so really, the two movies are practically the same thing. Anyway, none of it matters, because I haven't seen it yet, and I ain't talking about it yet. Nope, today we're flashing back to Pixar's past with a deep dive into the Finding Nemo franchise to explore a plot point that may have some significant implications for our dad-son duo as well. Is it really a franchise? I mean, there's only two movies. There is only two movies, and I'm pretty sure I'm not calling two movies a franchise. There needs to be at least three, four movies till you actually call it a franchise. Well, the eventual third movie in the franchise, because we all know it's coming. Now, obviously, animated yeah. movies with talking animals are expected to take a few liberties. Going in, the audience understands that not everything in the movie is going to be 100% realistic. It's why most of us can watch the Circle of Life scene from The Lion King without needing there to be a zebra getting its throat ripped out by a hungry cheetah. However, there are some people out there who just can't stand a movie with factual inaccuracies like that. And no, his name is not just Matt Pat. Or at least, I mean, I'm not alone. Case in point, the director of Finding Nemo, Andrew Stanton, who's been very vocal about his need for scientific accuracy in the Finding Nemo movies. When he watched The Lion King, it rubbed him the wrong way. So, when developing Finding Nemo, Stanton very intentionally sought to present the animal kingdom with truth, even when that truth was unfair or brutal. Stanton explains, quote, Nemo is working with the real world, the real predatory world, and was definitely a response to The Lion King. I liked working with the limitations of the rules of nature, as opposed to breaking the rules and saying everything's in it for the circle of life, end quote. As a result, the Nemo- I mean, did Finding Nemo do as good as the Lion King? No, because it's the Lion King, people. It's the Lion King. Finding Nemo did not do as good as the Lion King, all right? There's 3.7 trillion fish in the ocean. They're looking for one. All right. 
Though films are chock full of marine biology facts and truths. What you want to do is follow the EAC. That's a uh, East Australian current. Yep, totally a real thing that exists and that fish used to migrate. Let's name the zones of the open sea. Epilogic, mesopelagic, bathyol, abyssopelagic. The rest are too deep for you and me to see. Not just a catchy song, but also a nice way to remember the different zones of the ocean. I am a nice shark, not a mindless eating machine. Fish are friends. Not food. Yep, even this is housed in some level of fact. There are certain species of shark that are able to survive on a mostly vegetarian diet. But just how truthful was Andrew willing to go? Because Nemo and Marlin are clownfish, and clownfish harbor themselves an interesting anatomical secret. You see, in the absence of a female in the colony, a male clownfish will become female. That's right, according to everything scientists currently know about clownfish, if Nemo's mom had truly been killed by a barracuda like we see in the opening of the movie, then Marlin, Nemo's dad, would have immediately begun the process of becoming a biological female. That's because clownfish are are what's known as protandrous hermaphrodites, which means that they're born with immature reproductive organs. The male organs develop first, around the age of two, and the female organs only develop later should the clownfish's colony need him to step up, because clownfish colonies have themselves only one female at a time, and she only mates with the dominant male. If and when the female dies, the dominant male then steps up and turns into the dominant female. But that's not the big reveal I'm talking about when it comes to finding Nemo. No, there's one last twist to the story. With our dominant male, in this case Marlin, now female, it leaves the role of the dominant male vacant, which means that one of the immature males from the colony has to move up into the role of the breeding male. But in Nemo's colony, there's only one other fish to fill that role, Nemo himself. Meaning that when Marlin transitions into a biological female, Nemo would then biologically be required to move up into the role of the dominant male. In other words, in a completely realistic version of this movie, Nemo Nemo would then procreate with his own parent, Marlin. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 pretty disgusting. But if you think about it, it's this it's life. It's life for them. They don't think it's disgusting. It's, they think it's this it's just good. You know, it's not disgusting for them. It's like life. It's just life. I mean, that's. You know, maybe other animals think that us eating other animals is disgusting, but that's just our way of life. That's their way of life. So, it's not disgusting for them, but it's disgusting for us. Yikes! I know our unofficial tagline is ruining your childhood, but seriously, this one is really gunning for that title. Now, in all seriousness, surely Disney doesn't intend for their animated family franchise to be interpreted this way, right? I mean, we see a whole lot of Marlin after his wife Coral dies, and everyone, including Marlin himself, only ever identify him as being male, without question. A year later, during the events of Finding Dory, Marlin is still being referred to as a he, and there's certainly no evidence that Marlin and Nemo are, you know, taking a role in the Anemone. In Finding Dory, the two of them still live alone without any signs of tiny clowns around. Sorry, tiny clowns led to a scary visual there. Tiny underwater clowns are the stuff of nightmares. Let me rephrase that. The two still live alone without any signs of tiny clown fish around. What was that you said, Andrew Stanton? I liked working with the limitations of the rules of nature as opposed to breaking the rules. Probably regret making that comment now, huh? Then again, Stanton very, very clearly did his research on clownfish. He sought to show the animal kingdom in a realistic light, and it appears everywhere you look. Coral and Marlin embody the typical clownfish family dynamic to a T. As the most dominant member of their schools, female clownfish are the ones who venture out of the anemone and defend their homes against predators, while male clownfish tend to the children and rarely stray far from the anemone. Coral, in true female clownfish fashion, does not back down from the barracuda and dies defending her eggs. Likewise, Marlin is nurturing and overcautious about straying too far from home. Clownfish are basically the only fish in the sea that don't get stung by an anemone, and the Films are sure to toss that factoid in there too. Hey guys, I was just oh, 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 Dory. Even when we get to finding Dory, the aquarium is littered with marine biology facts. So just how far were they willing to push the scientific factuality of this movie? Well, this will... I mean there are a lot of facts, scientific facts in that movie. Now that I've watched Finding Nemo in its entirety, but I have watched Finding Dory in its entirety. Yeah. That was a while ago. Twelve years after finding finding Nemo was finding Dory. And now it's four years after, I'm pretty sure it's 
in 2016. That was a long time ago. But I remember it just like a year, a year last year. Come as a surprise to very few of you, but I have myself a theory. A film theory. I think they're doing it. I think this is exactly what is happening in these films. Not the part about Nemo. Obviously, that would be a line too far. But I do think that Marlin may in fact be changing biologically to a female clownfish right in front of our eyes. Just hear me out on this. As you might assume, it's going to take some time for the dominant male clownfish to fully change biologically into a female. In fact, a 2019 study found that a dominant male clownfish's organs can take years to fully develop into female parts. But they also found that the change from male to female begins first in the clownfish's brain, before any actual physical changes are detected in their mating organs. Meaning that a dominant male clownfish's behaviors will turn female almost immediately as soon as the death of the female clownfish happens in the colony. So again, to summarize, because this is important, the behavioral changes happen right away and the physiological changes occur later. Later. So what does this mean for the character of Marlin? Well, it means that Marlin should be exhibiting female behaviors shortly after we see Coral die. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what we see happening. Let's create a All timeline, right. shall we? Marlin's transformation begins the moment Coral is killed by the Barracuda. We'll call this Day Zero. At that point, Nemo is an egg that's just a couple of days from hatching. After the Barracuda attack leaves Marlin with only one viable egg to raise, we leap forward in time to when Nemo is a juvenile clownfish, which would put him between the ages of 9 and 15 months old. At this stage, a fish in Marlin's position should be exhibiting a fully developed female brain, and we'd expect to see Marlin exhibiting female clownfish characteristics and behaviors, like issuing warning calls or even launching attacks while remaining cautious about venturing too far from the anemone. And as the films progress, we do, in fact, see Marlin becoming assertive in brand new ways. He's been battling sharks and jellyfish, sharks? all sorts of... That can't be him. Are you sure? What was his name? Uh, some sort of sport fish or something. Tuna? Uh, trout? Marlin? That's it! Marlin! The little clownfish from the reef! It's my dad! He took on a shark! I heard he took on three. And Marlin certainly does remain cautious about venturing too far from the anemone, even right. throughout the course of Finding Dory, which occurs one year later. So this means at the conclusion of Finding Dory, we're roughly two years from day zero. Approximately nine to 15 months at the end of the first movie, plus 12 months in the second movie, or about 24 months total. Nemo is now two years old, and theoretically, Marlin has been undergoing this changing process for two years. Does this theory hold water based on the timeline of events? Yes. You see, the two years year mark just so happens to be the pivotal point in time for both Nemo and Marlin. For Nemo, he's reached the end of his adolescence. Clownfish reach reproductive maturity at the two-year mark. So Nemo is on the very cusp of this moment when Finding Dory concludes. This means that the next time we see Nemo, he's finally going to be able to step up into the role of the breeding male. But as we all know, it takes two to underwater tango, and at the two-year mark, Marlin is still likely going through his transformation. In that 2019 study I referenced earlier, researchers observed the changing clownfish for a three-year period. When the study concluded after those three years, only three of the 17 males had fully completed the gonadal change to female. So all of this is to say, when Finding Dory concludes, we wouldn't expect clownfish in Nemo and Marlin's positions to be rubbing fins, but we would expect them to start the process in the near future. So this feels like a smart place for Disney to end its family-friendly franchise, because from here on out, things are going to start to get hashtag awkward. Word. So there you have it, folks. Very much. This is why we're never going to get Finding Nemo 3, because if the director is truly committed to scientific accuracy in his movie, then there is no world, no... Yeah, there's no way Disney will approve that plot, or Pixar will approve that plot, because that's not the beginning of the company to actually approve it. Not Disney, because Disney is very family friendly. World where a Nemo 3 could happen. Surely nothing could convince Disney to undermine its commitment to entertaining broad family audiences with base level entertainment. Not even money, right? Right? Well, just how much money are we talking about here exactly? Because from a financial standpoint, the Finding Nemo franchise is an absolute cash cow. The Finding Nemo duology has made more money than any other duology in Pixar history. In fact, when adjusted for inflation, Finding Nemo and Finding Dory are Pixar's number one and number two highest grossing films ever. And from a creative standpoint, director Andrew Stanton hasn't ruled out the possibility of a third Nemo movie. Here's another quote from him. I really do feel like this was the missing piece emotionally for the first movie. 
happy. Now, I've stopped saying never for anything because there are a lot of characters that get introduced and we've broadened the universe for this movie. And again, I'm very used to seeing that world continue to open up from the Toy Story movies, so I've learned to just say, to my knowledge, I think everything that was born of the first movie is wrapped up, but we'll see, end quote. But let's take a look at that last comment, shall we? Everything that was born of the first movie is wrapped up. Not quite, Andrew. You see, I'm thinking the strongest argument for a third Nemo movie is from a story standpoint. The three main characters in both these films are Nemo, Dory, and Marlin. First, Marlin found Nemo in Finding Nemo, then Marlin found Dory in Finding Dory, and up next, naturally, we would expect Marlin to find Marlin. This won't be so much a physical search for Marlin as it is a story of internal discovery, as Marlin shoulders new gender roles amid his own biologically mandated role change. I mean, maybe. Maybe that's possible. It's like a marine biologist's Maybe. version of transparent. He's discovering himself as a new fish. As the fish that he was always born to be. I mean, that'll be kind of tough to cut out for China there, Disney. But then again, some things are bigger than China. Disney could definitely use the PR after being pummeled in recent years for its lackluster portrayal of LGBT plus characters. And let's face it, a story like this is still rooted in the real world science that Andrew Stanton founded these movies on in the first place. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Share guys, like and subscribe, hit that bell. I forgot to say that in the beginning of the video, but you can do it now. Like and subscribe, hit that bell. And yeah, share guys, thanks for watching. And of course, peace out of peace. Peace.